Tom Sinclair here, that Vid Blaster guy, coming to you with another exciting episode of that Vid Blaster guy. Yes, indeed. Today, we're, I mean, on every show, we explore the wonders of uh, Vid Blaster, the very first uh, live video streaming software that I ever found and just still very, very, very close to my heart. Um, if, if you've watched us before, then don't pay any attention to what I've, I've said. But if you're watching this for the first time, the, kind of the concept of this show is that one guy with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. And we are getting there, thanks to, to many of the folks that, that watch this show that have been so helpful with their tips and tricks and, uh, and sharing you know, videos and, and graphics and all sorts of stuff. It, uh, it, it's working. It's working, and it's been a lot of fun. We are in our third year. Uh, just forgot, you know, we don't, we're not counting episodes, sorry. We, we're, we're not on the episode count. But uh, we are in our third year and, and just, excuse me, having a ball. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, I hope you'll subscribe. Thank you very much. And if you're watching us live, then hat tip. You know, you guys are the real troopers. And we invite you to watch us live. We're on Wednesdays at uh, 3 o'clock Eastern. That's 8 o'clock in Young London. And sometime early in the morning, on Thursday morning in Australia. So if you're in Australia and want to watch, <laughs> you'll have to do the time, time conversion. I'm, I'm not very good with that. But nevertheless, um, it's, it's a real treat. Whoops, where do we go there? Sorry about that. It's a real treat to, to be with you today. Um, yeah, somebody in the chat room is telling me I need to fix my earbuds. That was the one part of the pre-show that I forgot to get done. Made so many changes today to my setup. And, uh, you know, you're never supposed to do that show day. You're never supposed to do that show day. I added a new audio device. I, uh, I accidentally I added a new camera. Somehow I, I got uh, this, this giant echo that came in. It took me, uh, you know, it, it wasn't long, but it took 15 minutes to track down you know, with the snap fingers test, where is this audio coming from? And finally found out it was coming from this camera, the Canon HF200, which is hooked up to an Intensity Pro card. And I had ena enabled the audio from the Intensity Pro this morning as a way to try to get rid of some of the, the little glitches and, and pops and snaps that had found its way into my audio. So uh, I had to basically then relearn how to uh, control the microphone on the camera and turn it all the way down. Anyway, you didn't want to know about any of that. Um, I've also got an IP cam hooked up to the, uh, the system today, a, a Dahua, D-A-H-U-A, Dahua um, 4300S. And we'll talk about that in just a minute because we're going to talk about the IP decoder, which is one of the really cool modules in VidBlaster. Um, and I've also, oh, I almost hate to say this, I do have a second PC connected today. Um, let me let me show you. Now, don't pay any attention to the mess, but this is behind the scenes in the studio. This is what the studio really, really looks like. And uh, it's, 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 you know, Vid Blaster here on the center monitor. Over here on the left, I've got the chat room. I've got Wirecast, which is doing streaming and recording. And then I've got Windows Task Manager, so I can keep an eye on my cores and make sure none of them are, are, uh, are, are getting too high. And it looks like all of them are getting too high right now. Anyway, um, and you can see the IP cam right up here, yeah, right there. And over the way, behind all this mess, is a second PC, which I have hooked up to the third monitor. This monitor over here on the right, hooked up to a third monitor. I don't generally do that, and I've just been experimenting with it today because, you know, a stupid reason, but the, the uh, video card, in my production PC, which drives all three monitors, suddenly decided that it didn't want to send a signal to that right-hand monitor. And I don't know if I've got a, a uh, one of those uh, uh, little connectors that goes between the, uh, the, the video port and the VGA connection on this monitor. Um, it's, a, it's an active connector, and I don't know if it's given up the ghost or whether it's the video card that's given up the ghost. So I'll have to do some part swapping to find out. But since I had an extra monitor around and I had an extra PC around, I thought I would just, uh, yeah, let's just wing it and hook it up and see what it did and, and then have one of these neat switches that allows me to use the same keyboard and the same mouse. 
um, but two different PCs. So anyway, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a long explanation to what's going on today. Uh, but it sounds like, it sounds like we got our pop, crackle, snap uh, issue fixed. We'll see on that one. And, uh, and I want to tell you about this camp. Uh, let's see if we can get a little close-up of it here using our handy-dandy handheld uh, Logitech, uh, what do you call it? It's a C310. Yeah, there's the cam. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's got uh, the, the little infrared uh, LEDs in the middle, and so that'll go out about 100 feet on the infrared. I've got it mounted. Uh, <laughs> I semi-destroyed the, the mount on one of my tripods just by screwing this guy into it. I think it'll be okay, but I wanted to have it where it was easily accessible. You can see there's my Canon HF200 right next to it, and so I've got that as part of the shoot today, and let's see, oops, let's see, we can uh, see if we can enable that camera, and I'll show you what it looks like, and yeah, there we go, and I don't think I have the white balance on it just right, but that's the cam. It's got a little bit of a delay in it, about a three or four second delay. It's not too bad. I've got it set up for 720, but I'm getting some little ghosting halo effects over here that uh, I'll have to go back and check. In VidBlaster, VidBlaster um, will, it, will take an IP cam uh, if it's a, um, what's it called, uh, an MJPEG uh, encoding. And so we've got this cam set up for MJPEG. Um, the... Um, VidBlaster also has a, well, let me show you. You know, we've got all these cool to, tools and toys here. Let's see if we can show you one of them. I'm just going to do a real quick and dirty screen capture. I hadn't intended to do this, but let's just take a look and see. Um, this is the IP decoder module right here. And it's available, unfortunately, it's only available in the studio and broadcast editions of VidBlaster, but it's, but it's, it's cool. And if, you know, if you're doing, using IP cams, you're probably up at this level anyway. So if you right-click on that, uh, you can open. And if you open, can I drag that window in? Yeah, there we go. You open, you see there's a long URL, or not URL, but a long stream name. Um, I guess it's called a URL. That, that you put in in order to identify where the camera is. In this case, it's on my local network. So there's the network address right there, the 192.168.1.121. And then it's going out over port 554. And then uh, cam, real monitor, uh, question mark, channel 1, and subtype equals 0, and pro2 equals ONIF. Now, I had to dig all over the internet um, I'm gonna just switch you back to that switch you back to that cam there we go I had to dig all over the internet to find that that address uh, it didn't come in the camera manual it is not something that I found um, on the vidblaster forum it was I finally found it on a, a random IP security camera um, forum and they had a list of about, oh, maybe 500 different cameras and the, and the connections to them. Uh, and so it was just, you know, basically trial and error. The one thing I knew, if I was, since I was experimenting with VidBlaster at the moment, the one thing I knew was that it, it had to be set for, um, for MJPEG. Um, and then there was a slightly different code that... Uh, no, 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 I take that back. The same exact code uh, would work for H.264 if you were using Wirecast or vMix. The, uh, the problem with the H.264 encoding setting was that it, um, it introduced a delay about a second to a second and a half. And so that, you know, a second and a half, well, shoot, that's 40 frames, 45 frames at 30 frames a second. Um, so that's, that's obviously unusable for anything that's going to involve, you know, the lips or any kind of synchronized um, audio and video. It would be okay for a crowd shot, 
um, or for if you're doing a church to do a, a looking out over the congregation shot, uh, if you're doing a sporting event to, to give sort of a whole field shot um, because the audio wasn't going to be you know, that critical that it be matched up. Um, certainly for an IP cam, you know, it's, it's fine because it, it's not intended to be synced up um, necessarily, they're more interested in uh, in what the in what the what the image is, um, but this one does carry audio. Although I haven't enabled the audio, basically using the cam. Oh, goodness! Sorry, didn't mean. Am I keeping you guys awake? Anyway, using the cam and then using the audio th that's that's run through the PC through through my overhead mic here. Um, let's see. The um, the purposes for this, um, somebody suggested that it would make a good camera for a um, a product display. Um, you know, if I were showing a close up of of what an item was, and I agree with that. It's it's pretty reasonably priced. I mean, it's not as reasonably priced as my you know Logitech C nine nine no excuse me C three ten. Um, you know, this was $45 and we'll do, you know, 720p and it's great for a, a quick and dirty cam, you know, throw it in my backpack when I go on trips and use it with my laptop, um, which of course is the way it was intended to begin with. But I think there, there will be some, some purposes for this camera. Uh, one of the stumbles that I, I made, and, and this was a stumble I made last week and was r the reason why we didn't even have a show last week. Um, I was trying this camera, and you remember the, <laughs> the golden rule is don't install any new hardware or software the day that you're going to do a broadcast. Um, it, uh, I, I installed it, and I used the default settings, and among the default settings that I used, I used the default bit rate. Well, the default bit rate was like 10,000 K B P S, and as a result, it choked my little local area network here, and I, I need to go back and look at the router and and see if I can uh, replace that with a faster router. And and what happened is my my uplink, which normally is you know pretty stout at at 25 to 30 um, megs up, that was reduced to like 0.5 megs up. Now, there was a day that I would have killed for 0.5 megs up. <laughs> to get 500K up would have been wonderful, but not when you're used to 27 megs. So that, it, and it took, it took probably three hours to track that down last Wednesday. And so I apologize for, for the no-show situation last Wednesday. And that was the reason why. There was just, uh, I, my bandwidth was eaten up by that beautiful little white camera. And uh, I think uh, Dave is suggesting in, in the, the chat room that it would be good for replays. And I bet it would. That uh, Again, short, one of the shortcomings, and I'm going to give you the unvarnished truth about this thing. One of the shortcomings is that it's, it's a fixed focus, fixed zoom camera, which is perfect for security, but it's not good for broadcasting. So it has, um, unless your software has the ability to zoom a camera, uh, either dynamically or zoom it fixed, um, then it's it's not going to work very well. Now, VidBlaster will... Uh, I haven't figured out how to, to put it in a place where I can crop it yet. Um, I guess I could set it up as a, a picture-in-picture in, picture in an effect module and then crop that picture-in-picture picture and then blow it up to be full screen. Um, and if it's coming in, you know, 1080 or 720, then you probably, you know, basically you're doing a digital zoom, not an optical zoom. So you're using up some of your resolution. So your resolution is going to drop from 720 to, you know, what, 480, 320. Um, it's something that I, I may play around with that. Uh, the camera is priced U.S. at about 120. Um, it really is, it, in a documentation was, was really hard to find on it, and I realized later I've stumbled, again, stumbled across a, uh, you know, I don't do anything but surf the Internet for fun. <laughs> what a boring life. 
But I was, I was looking for more information on the camera, and I stumbled across a security um, company blog. And they were talking about this camera and the fact that there was no documentation available for it because it was an OEM cam that was intended to be sold through a exclusive string of wholesalers just to security companies. And so there wasn't any need to put on any documentation uh, because the wholesaler was going to give it to the security company when they bought the cameras. You know, here it is, bud. Take it. Good luck. And so there wasn't much online. And so eventually we would, uh, we, we, we found out a little of this and a little of that and, and we're able to get it up and running with VidBlaster. Um, I would bet too that if you were doing a, um, a reality TV show and you set up one of these in each room in the studio or the house or whatever, that... Um, it would probably work. It would probably work because it, it wasn't going to be, you know, what is it, uh, that, that, that really redneck, if you haven't seen it, don't bother. It's a redneck uh, reality TV show called Party Down South, and it's supposed to show you what Southerners are really like in the United States, and never mind about that part. But they've got IP cams set up throughout the house so that they can sort of monitor where people are and when they're moving around and, and then uh, get good shots with different cams. So, you know, if you're, doing a, <laughs> if you're doing a reality TV show, it might work great with that too. Um, anyway, oh yeah, I'm getting a comment in the chat room that you can only read this URL at the bottom of the screen when, uh, when we get the right background on it, so we'll have to fix that. Um, Thank you for the tip. The, uh, the IP decoder module, as, as John is pointing out in the chat room, can be used to bring in um, a public webcams. Uh, again, you, you need to know the URL, the address of the camera, and then you need to know the syntax uh, to be able to enter it into the IP decoder in order to, to get, that, get that look. I'm going to show you this, this cam just one more time here. And uh, that's the cam, and it's set currently uh, at 720p and at uh, the MJPEG uh, connection. And it, the highest resolution on it is 1536p. So it's pretty, pretty high res. Now, the downside with the 1536p <laughs> is that it's only 20 frames a second. So I guess that would be good for security purposes, but for broadcasting purposes, eh, it's not really going to work. Not really going to work. So it, it was a good experiment into, uh, you know, what this cam would look like and how it would work and whether it would work. But, uh, you know, I can proclaim with um, a good deal of certainty that I won't be using this camera in the studio. And I'm not sure how else I might use it. Somebody's asking, is there a higher grade model with zoom capabilities? I don't know. I do know they have, uh, even within the same brand, uh, Dahua, they have, they have PTZs, that is point, tilt, and zoom. So I guess that's got zoom in it, PTZ. Uh, but they're, yeah, they're a lot more than $120. You're, you're getting up into the hundreds and hundreds at that point. But this is a, a very, I think, inexpensive, good, Good image quality. That's the plus side to it. Good image quality. Wish you could f wish you could zoom it. That would be helpful. Uh, you can certainly put it on tripod and, and and tilt it and pan it, but you can't zoom it. So, VidBlaster's IP decoder really does open up lots of opportunities. And one of the opportunities that I was talking with one of my friends about was. Um, if you had, and he does, he has a network of about 40 or 50 high schools that uh, he sells broadcasting services to. And so he provides them with the, the, the stream URL um, and provides them with the, uh, the, the CDN, among other things, lots of services that he provides. So he could take, conceivably, he could get the URL, the stream URL, probably from the CDN, 
and put it in the IP decoder, and then he could pick up whatever was being streamed um, to that to, to that address uh, and put it in the IP decoder. And then, if he had if he had the broadcast edition, he could have multiple ID, IP decoders and pull in multiple streams from his various high schools and do his own. Uh, ESPN show and pop into this game for a second and pop into that game for a second and pop into this game. Or if you had a uh, reporter in the field and they had a, um, a camera that would connect to, uh, or a phone for that matter, that would connect to Ustream, you could strip out the, uh, the URL, the stream URL from Ustream and import that through the IP decoder and, uh, and have your own you know, camera in the field, as it were. So there are lots of lots of really neat capabilities with the IP decoder once you kind of get into it. It it does carry audio, even though we didn't play with that today. It does carry audio, and it does have uh, some buffering capabilities. So if you're having trouble with a, a laggy stream, you can use it to buffer, and it'll smooth out the stream. Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, coming up. Coming up, that's all for the camera. Coming up um, soon, don't know how soon, but I'm getting the feeling that it's pretty soon that VidBlaster will be releasing a new beta. When they do, the current beta is beta 3.33, which is what we're using for this broadcast today. And it's, it's pretty darn bulletproof. Um, there are a couple little things that I may be, I think may be tweaking and are going to be in the next edition, which I think is 336. I think there's a 334 and a 335 that were um, kind of either private betas or OEMs. Um, but 336 may be the, the, the possibly the last beta uh, before a new release version. The current official release is 3.17, um, and so that, that's pretty bulletproof. Um, let's see what else. Coming up, oh, um, coming up after this show, our second segment today will be streaming idiots, and we'll be talking a little bit more about the camera and some other part, some other features of the camera. So if you're interested in the cam, stick around for that. Um, if you're watching us live, if you're watching us on YouTube, um, this is Wednesday, February fourth. For that vid blaster guy, we'll release streaming idiots on Friday, February sixth unless you subscribe. So come to our website, easternshorebroadcasting.com, and subscribe, and we'll send you an advanced link. You know, big whoop, I know. Yeah, but at least you get to watch it two days sooner if you missed it in full. Um, we have several projects coming up, and we have a giveaway contest coming up. So you want to stay awake. Um, wake up out there um, for our giveaway contest. One of the projects that we've got, con uh, we've got coming up is that I've purchased a... Um, what would, how, how would you call it? Um, junk, I think, is the best way to put it. <laughs> I bought somebody else's junk. It's a, uh, a 1996 um, Stream Genie, which was uh, a wonderful machine put out by Pinnacle Systems that was a, a, essentially a, a studio, TV studio in a box. Uh, it was the size of, if, for those of you that used to carry briefcases, it was the size of a catalog case and, uh, and had the monitor and the keyboard and the PC and the capture cards and all that built into it, and it could stream out. And it retailed for about, about $28,000 uh, in 1995, 1996. Uh, I bought it off of eBay last week for $100 plus $17 in shipping. Um, so I don't think it's operational, but my thought is that I can strip out all the guts and uh, use the case and the monitor and the keyboard and put in a new motherboard and all the other fixings and a capture card and basically have a portable, maybe luggable would be a better word for it, a luggable uh, streaming PC, something that could go to uh, remote venues like uh, uh, ball games and, and city council meetings and set up uh, on a small little table, plug into house sound and, and plug in a cam and away you go. So we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll keep you guys abreast of uh, how that build goes. We'll probably shoot video on it 
uh, even though the build will hopefully will only take a short while, but uh, we'll shoot video and then separate it out and then post a little bit of video uh, every week uh, and then probably use it for the broadcast for the very last video. Anyway, that's the plan. We'll see how it works. So you want to keep, keep in tune with that and you want to keep in tune with the giveaway contest that's coming up. Uh, the giveaway contest will probably coincide with either the next beta of VidBlaster or the next uh, official release version of VidBlaster. Uh, so we'll have to see. We don't really know when that comes, so we'll have to uh, lay our plans accordingly uh, and just lay really flexible plans. So that's it. Thank you for tuning in. My hope is that uh, you've uh, stayed awake through the whole show, number one and uh, that you will uh, join us again in a future broadcast. Again, we're Wednesdays live at 2 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock London time, and then uh, post it onto YouTube thereafter. Uh, the YouTube channel, I think, is uh, that VidBlaster guy. Yeah, that, that, that would be a good thing for it to be. Uh, if you've got a question and you think I can help, uh, shoot me an email it's, uh, it's, it's Tom at thatvidblasterguy.com. Tom at thatvidblasterguy.com. And I'll see if I can help. Now, if, oh, you know, and I forgot about doggone it. I hate when I forget this stuff. Full disclosure, I'm an authorized Vidblaster reseller, and we design and, and build custom PCs for streaming. So if you're interested in buying Vidblaster or upgrading your current Vidblaster to a new version or to a new edition, um, I can help you with that. If you purchased it elsewhere and you need some personal support, I can help you with that too. We'll, we may ask you to buy a support package if your problem is really big and hairy and it's going to take a lot of time. But if it's just a question or two, we might be able to help with that. So uh, that's, that's that part of it. Um, the other part of it is uh, thank you for watching. We'll, we hope to see you next time. At least I hope you can see me next time. Anyway. Take care, and oh golly, you know what? I just realized that the uh, the audio device, yeah, I guess that's right. Okay, we'll see. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. Take care. Have a great week.